And believe me, I, I take no particular joy in telling you this, but the end of the year referendum to enshrine an Indigenous voice to Parliament through constitutional change, I think today's in big trouble. And it's not just the result of poll after poll showing how the yes vote continues to slip, including today's news poll in The Australian revealing the no vote now sits at 43%, 11% don't even know how they'll vote, and yes sits at below 50 for the first time at 46%. Now, the yes campaign has backed itself into a corner and the Prime Minister is the chief cheerleader and he will need to take the blame if this referendum is lost. That is unless he agrees to split the question, as has been suggested by various Conservative leaders and commentators, including myself. It seems clearly a majority of Australians don't have an issue with Indigenous recognition in the founding document, our Constitution. What they do have a problem with is this notion of a voice and what that actually means. Who will be making up this new layer of bureaucracy? How will they be chosen? What will they actually do and what power will they have? Australians are smart people. They usually get their opportunity to vote right and they are pragmatic. They hear the argument that this voice thing will not actually do anything to quickly and permanently improve the lives of disadvantaged Indigenous communities across Australia. And they say, well, what's the point? And it is a powerful point. And I believe many other Australians who are engaged in this debate are doing their own research and they don't like much of what they see in places, for example, like New Zealand or in Canada, even in their own states where a version of this voice arrangement's already in place. Now, I'll give you one example. Take Victoria, clearly the most, I guess, progressive, I'd call it, lefty-leaning state in the Commonwealth. Victoria, and many Australians might not know this already, has a truth-telling commission. It's headed for a treaty, Victoria is, and its UROC Justice Commission can and has the power to demand public office holders appear before it. Yep, an unelected body can demand someone, such as the Victoria Police Commissioner Shane Patton, to appear it f before it for a grilling. Now, as the Herald Sun reported last week, Commissioner Patton, sitting in a chair draped with a possum skin, apologised formally for what he, the Commissioner, called, quote, racist actions against Aboriginal people and attempted cover-ups by police. Believe me, this is how the voice will unfold if it succeeds. We will see organisations that believe they are being discriminated against forcing public officials to sit before them. It'll be called truth-telling. It will end up being compensation generating. First comes the so-called truth-telling and then a treaty and then compensation. This is where we are going. Now, Commissioner Patton, was accused during his evidence of not treating First Nations people as human beings. The Police Commissioner of Victoria. I mean, that's patently ridiculous. The Justice Commissioner, Sue Ann Hunter, who heads that group, slammed the plan to offer police three and a half hours of cultural education. She labelled it this way, 3.5 hours on how to treat First Nations people as human beings, which evidence shows they do not know how to do. What evidence does she have for that? She went on to complain about, in her words, over-representation of Indigenous people in custody. Well, I'd make the point, if you don't break the law, you don't end up in a jail cell. Believe me, this is where we are headed nationally if this referendum gets up. If you're unsure of what the voice will look like, no further than look no further than Victoria and then make up your own mind.